Hello guys, Pavel Oskarov with you again and today we will talk about how to refactor uh, controller code into service and what are different ways to do that. Because I've been shooting a few videos about services and I realized there are at least three different ways how to use the code from the service in a controller. So you can use static uh, methods, you can use uh, just uh, creating new object of a service, you can use dependency injection and we will talk about all of that based on our article I say our article because it's a combined uh, effort of our whole team so this article is written by me technically but approved by three team members and we explored five different ways how to refactor from controller to somewhere and the problem generally online as I've seen is a lot has been written about dependency injection and services about syntax how to use that but not enough is written about when to use them why to use them what is the what is the benefit when you reuse the code and stuff like that so we will go from simple example to more complicated to more complicated in this video and initial example is pretty similar I've I've been shooting a similar video previously on reporting controller. So imagine you have a controller with some complex report. It doesn't matter that much what it does. Uh, what matters, it's complex. So 50 lines of code in for each, some complex calculations, by the end of which you have entries uh, array, and you pass that to the view to show that. And first way to refactor this kind of mess from controller to somewhere is just basically copy and paste it into an external class, call it a service and make a method static. So static means it doesn't have any states, it doesn't uh, have any parameters in constructor, anything, just basically it's a helper method, just namespaced uh, by object-oriented uh, programming theory. So you have app services namespace, create a class there inside of it, and you create a function get transaction report which returns the entries that you need and then in the controller you just call that service and call a static method so you don't need to create any objects pass anything uh, anything additionally you just pass uh, the exact parameters you need you get the entries and use them so this case should be used uh, if your method if your service method can be a simple kind of calculate calculation method or helper method without any additional parameters. And what do I mean by parameters? Let's go down below. And by the way, I'm reading the article now just to save you time. So to avoid me live coding that in PHP Storm, uh, it will be faster, I think, uh, to read the article because it's the same examples here. Second way is to actually create service object with non-static method, which means that there's no static here, but then in the controller you have this. So you have to actually create the object of that service and then you can call that method without static. So instead of those two columns, you have arrow. Uh, and it seems that it's just a syntax um, difference and doesn't matter that much. And in this case, for this simple case, it actually doesn't matter. Uh, of course, you can create a service. It could be two lines or one line of code. And that doesn't bring much benefit, right? Uh, but it can bring much benefit if you can chain the methods. So if the result of that method could be the same service object, then you can chain methods like this one. Here's an example. So you have a method and you have another method set here, for example, and then you can do this. So you create an object of that service, call one method and then call another method. If that method returns this, returns the same object. So you can chain uh, methods and then it's beneficial to create object of a service instead of static methods. So that was way number two. Way number three, uh, it's beneficial if object has a parameter. So if your service depends on a global variable, for example, you have a yearly report service and you have a few methods which you will call from the service but you want to have one variable for each of them. So like you set a year for the whole uh, service object and then call a few methods with the same parameter. So this is an example of a service. So you have a constructor and then we will create the object with year as a parameter. And then you have get transaction report, for example, and get income report, for example. And then both methods can use this year. So this year becomes private method of a service and it's used in a controller like this. So you have a year and you have 
uh, object of service with year as a parameter. So you set the year for uh, any methods called from the service with this object. So this is an example. You can call one service method and you call another service method with the same parameter and then that year would be taken from private property of the service class. So that makes sense if you have a global private variable, not a global private variable of a service, then you create the specific object with that parameter and then you work with that specific uh, object of, of a service. So that's way number three. Way number four is dependency injection. And again, quite a lot of examples online of dependency injection, how that works. So there's constructor injection, method injection, and a few more examples. But there's not much written about when to use that. And simple example is just uh, type hinting or, or creating the variable in constructor of a controller. So if you have a report service, you can just type hint. So this is called type hinting. So specifying the type of an object and then Laravel by magic will kind of create that object. Uh, and then you can use this report service in all the methods of your controller. So this makes sense if you have a few methods in the controller itself, like three, five, maybe more. If it's two methods, then it's questionable. So this is pretty similar to the static method from the first, from the very first example. You just cre create report service, and instead of doing report service, colon, colon, get report, you do this report service. So that doesn't bring very much benefit to compare with static class. It does bring benefit if you have, as I said, a few more methods in the controller itself. So to avoid repeating yourself, you just create a constructor injection and type hint the service. But on top of that, you can also inject the service into a method. So just do index report service, but that doesn't really bring much benefit because, well, there's no repeating. So it's only one method and you use it inside of the method. So in this case, you probably would be okay with calling static uh, method. But finally, when it does make sense, dependency injection, it makes perfect sense. And this is the topic which I haven't found really well written online for Laravel specifically, when to use dependency injection, how is it beneficial? And it becomes really beneficial when you program to the interface. So if your service implements some kind of interface which can be changed by another service, which implements the same interface. And let me give you an example here. So for example, you have report service and yearly re report service, and you want to change them. For example, for some cases you want to have report service used, and for other cases you have yearly report service. Then you create an interface, so just a class with a set of rules for both services. So basically both services should have get transaction report method. And that is just an interface. It's empty. It doesn't have any implementation. And then every service should implement that interface, implement that method get transaction report. Yearly report service depends on year uh, and implements the same method get transaction report. And then in the controller, you type hint not the service, but type hint the interface. Basically, that means that controller should expect some service which implements that interface. I'm not sure. I hope you're following and I hope I'm making myself clear. If not, then uh, shoot the comment below and let's discuss. Maybe I should reiterate on something. So anyway, you type hint the interface. And in fact, in this case, it would throw an error because we don't really specify which service to use. And that is specified externally in App Service Provider. In App Service Provider, this is the main benefit. So you can bind, it's, it's called binding. So you can bind a specific service to a specific interface and also do some logic around that. So for example, for local environment, you want to use report service and for production environment or wherever you should use yearly report service. More examples like this one could be payment provider, different local or, or remote environment. For unit testing, for example, mocking something like creating a service for local testing specifically and stuff like that. So basically, uh, dependency injection makes perfect sense if you have an interface, a few services or a few classes that implement that interface, and then in your controller you use the interface as a parameter and specify which service to use, 
and the main benefit is you you can interchange you can change the service in uh, app service provider by basically just changing one line or changing the environment so yeah that's it a long article 2000 words but i hope it's kind of clear for you when to use what so if you want to move your code from controller to your service to some external class these are five main ways how to reuse that how to create object or use static classes and stuff like that hope it was helpful if you want more on this topic let's comment below and let's discuss and see you guys in other videos